Hello everyone, my name is Alexander Razo Myers, and I'm a San Francisco Odd Salon Fellow coming to you from Forestville, California in Sonoma County. Art is not created in a vacuum, and the seventh seal is not a story without precedent, nor does it portray itself to be one. The plague of the 14th century is well known, and certainly not forgotten, though some of the elements are more familiar than any of us could have ever wanted to personally experience. The plague, though, that I speak of is the Black Death that roamed through Europe in the 14th century. Wretched, terrible, destructive year, the remnants of the people alone remain. From the Decameron, it first betrayed itself by the emergence of certain tumors in the groin or the armpits, some of which grew as large as a common apple, others as an egg. Of many others who died at home, the departure was hardly observed by their neighbors until the stench of the bodies carried the news. Plague, not great. Perhaps somehow, though, it only follows that Bergman, the son of a Lutheran minister who helped move corpses out of a hospital into the chapel with the hospital's gardener as a teen, was supposed to make a picture about a plague within a crusade, a crusade so stupid, only an idiot could have invented it. The only mechanism of ruin on the scale of the Black Death lurked in the creation of a bomb that could create mutually assured destruction. Atomic war, also not great. The Seventh Seal wasn't exactly running away from being a discourse on the greater fragility of humanity in 1957. A film that would be set to contemplate the issues of humanity before the neat chrome fins arrive in 1959 to distract people from the specter of impending doom that might possibly come but never did. Crusade so stupid, only an idiot could have invented it, neatly describes the tone of futility and frustration that film production frequently has. For how we remember it now is a film of high art. The Seventh Seal started off as a reasonably special, yet not particularly special script for a picture. Bergman and the head of Svensk Film Industry differ as to the enthusiasm for the project. Bergman saying that it took some coaxing, and the studio head, in typical studio head fashion, regardless of being from Hollywood or Sweden, insists for the historical record that he always knew it was going to be a special film and instantly was sold on it. One is far more inclined to believe Bergman's account of the reticent studio head and the established record of moderate budget and tight shooting schedule confirms the director's recollection. You have 35 days and $150,000. Welcome to the motion pictures, folks. Create a timeless work of art in 35 days and one million and a third dollars in today's money. Part of this was that unions in Sweden for the film industry were not as strong as they were in the United States. Jobs were less specialized. People did more multitudes of jobs, cut costs. Actors made far more meager salaries in the United States, even by 1957 standards, and certainly by modern standards. Rushing through production with a heavy camera blimped for sound, hiding the sound of the gears and motors and whirring of the film itself and the sprockets running through the camera that make the miracle and the magic of the motion picture camera. The crew had to haul the 200-pound camera down through the stony beach onto the rocks for the shots that we've all seen. They didn't exactly relish the job. Certain elements of the seventh seal were nearly impossible to outrun. Bergman, with his love of German expressionist cinema, borrowed the hard 1930s graphic contrast in the film of death and its existential contemplation, unquestionably using the Black Death as a convenient crutch to create a picture which sprang from the possibility of a tragedy worse than the Black Death, the age of the thermonuclear weapon. Stage actors, journeymen who knew how to make a show, and mostly part of the Bergman stage troupe, certainly sped production. Accounts widely mention the credit given to talent that was familiar, knew the director's methods, and could make the 35 days a tolerable window 
even if the days were 14 hours long in many cases. Gaunt and weathered, the look of Max Valenzado as the night, surprisingly only 27 at the time, gave the film an unmistakable hero, the crusader, with his own Sancho Panza, who was a far more questionable figure in The Squire, riding along to tilt with death the iconic gaunt figure across the chessboard. Good and evil in opposition are not unfamiliar to stories in classical history or literature. Those two frequently ride in the same train, but in different cars, and are certainly not unfamiliar to Bergman, who would sharpen the epic battle again in the Virgin Spring, only three years later. Cinematographer Gunnar Fischer recalls the shooting as adventurous. On the subject of the lighting for the most famous of all scenes in the film, in which the knight plays chess with death, Fischer remarked, You can see that each of them has a two-kilowatt light behind him, illuminating his profile. People said to me that that has to mean there are two suns. Yes, that is quite right, I said. But if you can accept death sitting and playing a game of chess, then you can also accept two suns. Death comes as the sun rises. I am a knowing, says death. As Bergman said of the production, the image of the dance with death beneath the dark cloud was achieved at hectic speed because most of the actors had finished for the day, assistants, electricians, and a makeup man, and about two summer visitors who never knew what it was all about, had to dress up in the costumes of those condemned to death. Camera with no sound was set up as the picture shot before the cloud dissolved. The Seventh Seal is a film out of its own time, but also not of its time either. More of the silent era in some ways, asking questions without insisting that our hands need keep a firm grip on embracing reality, lest our little minds are lost in a story that we have to think to follow. Of a story propelling forward in a predictable manner, and still, to be of our own questions of existence, the seventh seal poses what we didn't really want to ask. When the film hit U.S. shores, Variety said of it, Superior technical narrative, impressive lensing and thesping makes this a definite U.S. art house possibility. It would be chancy for more general situations say baking a cake, I suppose. It spread out an awesome canvas of human cupidity and purity. Variety noted that it was 96 minutes and 8,500 feet of film. The one-act play wood painting that Bergman created, broadcast over the radio in Sweden, became, while Bergman was in hospital with stomach ailments, into its first draft known as Night and Death, and the seventh seal as we knew it hit the shores a year later after a mixed to chilly critical reception in Sweden, the gist of which was generally, go back to comedy. Though one can find the cinematography looking a bit routine these days, compared to many noir and even 1960s television shows that brought the look of Bergman and Fisher to the U.S. in homes via Hitchcock and The Twilight Zone. Bergman said, Wood painting gradually became the seventh seal in an even film which lies close to my heart, because it was made under difficult circumstances in a surge of vitality and delight. The film is of a journey. Is there a there there? To crudely paraphrase Stein, chess serves as a clock to see if the journey will be completed before time runs out. Certain extents find the seventh seal asking questions that could also be applied to its production and the production of any film in a mist of half-spoken promises and unseen miracles, could also be applied to making a movie as well. Of course, I can't ignore the parodies. Monty Python's meaning of life complained about Americans not shutting up. I suppose I'm not making that any better. Quiet, you Englishmen. You're all so fucking pompous. Der Dove, a short film animated in 1968 at the Academy Awards for Best Short, had death playing badminton, repeat with pig Swedish, and was directed by George Coe, who some of you might recognize. Bill and Ted's bogus adventure, where they play Candyland with death and give death a wedgie. However, death playing chess with the Swedish chef from the Muppets 
is one not to be missed, which Bergman counted as one of his personal favorites. Auteurs are not always, much like the overlooked dark humor of the seventh seal, humorless. The film was a touchstone that changed the taste of American audiences and nearly single-handedly created the foreign cinema circuit. The Seventh Seal is a picture about a journey, a journey to see of home, as we recall, as we long for home, is what we recall it to be, extant in our memories, and along the way, who do we meet? And if you cannot kindly wait for death, should you encounter it, its unknowing face will play chess, and it will kindly wait for you. The night's journey of longing for the familiar is a bit more familiar to us now. What do we recall? What are our experiences we now longingly recall from our recent past, the past that we took for granted? What are those unspoken miracles we miss now? But let's not forget what rose from the Black Death, the Renaissance. And the Renaissance was pretty fucking great. Like Bergman, and I'm not to compare myself with the master. I present questions, longing for answers, which you'll only find within the qualia of your own consciousness. That is the enduring gift of Bergman's vitality and light. A toast. To paraphrase Bergman and his knight, may our unevenly executed ideas carry us through until we see each other's faces with strawberries and milk again. That warm memory we shall hold on to.